All right. Welcome back. This is Tidy Up Tuesday, part two, take two. Bloop. <laughs> Hopefully, I've got all my bugs worked out now and I am back and I'm going to give you a few minutes to rejoin me for Tidy Up Tuesday. I apologize, friends. Boy, that last update for my streaming software really did a number on my computer and um, it took me a while to come back. But I think I've got it all figured out. So um, when you come back, say hello so I know that everything is working back. Um, okay, so Bobby Ann is back again. All right, this is good news. This is good. Okay, so say hello again because I do want to... Um, just let me put do not disturb on. Um, <laughs> there we go. Hi again. Hi again. <laughs> okay. So I know this camera is a little glitchy. I'm going to, um, switch over. Let me see. This one I think is a little better. Okay. Welcome back. So what I want to do is just jump right in. Um, and thank you for being patient with me. I'm telling you technology kind of kicks my butt sometimes. <laughs> So just a quick recap, because I think what I'm going to do is take the other stream down, but just a quick recap. This is my mini series where we are talking about how to get our kids organized. We first talked about gathering everything in one place, getting everything for each child kind of compiled and into one place. And I shared that I was using my big, um, this big binder and I'm going to kind of come back in here and you can see that. This one is for Adam, but I also have photos and I have memorabilia and so many things that I've been needing to go through. And then part two was um, assess, like how do I want to put his memories together and what is the big picture on that? And then today we're going to talk a little bit more about the selection process because I think this is where all of us get hung up. At least I know I get hung up. Is like, oh, do I keep it? Do I not keep it? I want it. It's so cute. But, you know, if we kept everything, the volumes of albums would get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So how do we really make those good choices about what to put in the albums? I'm going to talk a little bit about that today and kind of share my thought process. And as I mentioned, in the earlier glitchy stream, <clears throat> one of the things that I think we have to realize is that what we can do is be selective for what we give away, but that doesn't mean we have to toss everything else out, right? We can also keep like a memory box or something else uh, for some of those things that we don't want to necessarily put in an album, but we don't want to give away or throw away either. So let's take a minute and go over to my overhead camera. Once again, we're going to cross your fingers. <laughs> okay, it looks like we are good to go now. Oh, that was a little bit of a quite a ride there, friends. I'm telling you. Um, you know, but hey, we're all here. We're we're just working through the process together. And this is real. This is not, you know, this is 100% um, <laughs> real time live streaming. What happens? Okay, so let me just go again. Um, I know, deja vu, huh? <laughs> Thank you for coming back, friends. Okay, so today what I want to do is talk a little bit more about memorabilia, about the selection process. And, you know, kind of how we get a handle on some of those things. So in, in this process, what I've been doing is, um, you know, I've gathered everything into this big binder. I've showed, I showed you this a little while ago. And then last week, um, I did the assessing. And so I want to share with you, first of all, kind of what I came up with, because this was the result of assessing what I wanted to give Adam in, you know, big in, in the big picture. What is my big picture for him? So I'm going to kind of share a little bit of this. And, and friends, I kind of see another form coming on, <laughs> possibly. Um, 
so I, I was looking a lot at the pop planner where, you know, I have, I do have this kind of in this format as well, but I just wanted to see it in a little different way. So I decided to do a keeping track of Adam and this is Adam's album plan. And for me, I thought, okay, if I have that just kind of in list form, this is something that um, could be helpful for me. So let me know in the comments if you like the idea of having, you know, just kind of like a little, another little tracker, a little form that you could do something like this um, for, for yourself. So what I want to share here is that the, the main thing is, remember last week I shared Adam's baby album and his volume one, volume two. So if you did, if, if you didn't catch that, you can go back and watch last week on replay and that I had already completed three of those albums. So I completed his baby album, which covered birth to first month. I completed volume one, which is his first year and volume two, which is second year. And then volume three was like, okay, I can't continue this format because I don't want to give him, you know, 25 volumes. So now I'm thinking, okay, volume three, I had started it. It's in process, but I really want to be a lot more selective now. These are done. I'm not going to go back and redo them, but now I want to be a whole lot more selective in years two through five. Now, I know this is really specific to me, but you know, the reason I'm sharing this is just so if you can draw some correlations to help you, you know, that's my whole plan. So volume three for me is going to be that. And I have started, I do have some pages. Then I get into the school and that's where, you know, I can look again at my pot planner and I go, all right, so I do have school volume one and that's in process. And I shared that with you last week as well. And it's kindergarten and I can squeeze in up to second grade. I figured I can squeeze that in volume one. So then I'm going to do another volume two. And just looking at the volume of what I have for third grade, you know, so that's, let's see, third grade, you know, third through fifth grade, see, something like that. I know that that's a lot that I'm go going to want to put into, probably that will fit into one whole album as well. And that's going to get him, these two volumes are going to get him through elementary. Um, uh, his elementary school years. And then just looking again at, because I've gathered everything in one place, I can then say, all right, so volume three for his school, I can actually, for me, I know I can be selective. He wasn't involved in sports. He wasn't involved in band or anything like that. So I can get middle school and high school all into one album. And I have not started either of those. But now I'm feeling like, okay, I have a plan. So I have four albums, then I have three albums. And that's going to get him all the way up through high school graduation. And then to me, it kind of struck me as an aha moment for myself, for my own plan, as to what the next step would be. So from, you know, he was 18 years when he graduated high school, then, you know, 18 years to present. Well, there's some big milestones that happened in this area. You know, he decided on his career choice. He started going to college. He moved out. You know, now he's um, living out of the house and near his college. And he's, you know, doing all of these really awesome things. And so I thought, well, then this is going to be triple A is all about Adam. So AA is all about, and I shared how I have his finder, uh, his um, spines on his album. Right now I have volume one, volume two, volume three. And so now I thought, okay, great. I, I want to get into volume four. And what is that going to look like for me? And the main thing that struck me was that I really want it to be a highlight reel. So those awesome moments for him, you know, special things, I want to add into this new volume four for him. And of course, yep, I have not started that totally behind. Like a lot of us here, you were telling me, um, yeah, you know, it's okay 
to be behind. But now I have a bigger perspective of this, his album plan. And then you always, you know, for a lot of us, we want to answer the question too. Um, I don't know why Siri keeps wanting to go on. Um, is, is there a theme? Do we have, is there among this plan, is there a theme album that I may want to do for my child? And so some of you, I know, you know, you might have band or cheerleading or color guard or sports, you know, I know like I can just imagine for, for my kids, I would want to do one theme album for each of them. And I shared kind of scouting where my boys they only did that from first to fifth grade, but there were a lot of awesome um, pictures that I have. So, and then for Adam, he never played sports, but for Eric, I could see this might be scouts and he did play base uh, um, little league for a little while. So that would be kind of something I could combine and just do, you know, an activities book for him. For my youngest. And then I know Audrey would definitely have a soccer book and my oldest Ellen would have a color guard book because she did these amazing shows. So I could see how those, instead of trying to squeeze them in, you know, these other books, which to me are already going to be packed here in middle school and high school, I'd rather do a theme album and just have all of those together in one place. That's what's going to work for me. But I know some of you may want to put that in with their school journey. And that's great too. It's just kind of what, what works the best for you. So I wanted to share that. So this really, I feel so much more comfortable having written this down. So I know at the end of the day, Adam's going to have um, four volumes of All About Adam, three volumes of School, and a theme and his baby book, and then a theme album, which would cover his scouting and all the, you know, the fun, fun places they went. Everything else, and, and to me, um, going back to volume four, the other thing, so it's highlights. Again, so I, I have a feeling like I can get a lot of years in this volume four, and maybe there is a volume five in, in the future, like maybe when you know, he takes the next step and wants to start his family or whatever that is. Um, and that might be, you know, a volume five highlight reel still. Now, the other thing that really got me excited about um, volume four was looking at his box of photos. So remember in the gather process, we have to gather all our memorabilia and then we have to gather all of our photos, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about photos too. And memorabilia photos. Whew. And, and so when I was looking through his box, I had started working on all of his pictures and I remembered that the library of memories really kind of talked about personality and um, and remember Stacy Julian's the one who kind of came up with this is like, what is his personality? What are those classic photos that just really define who Adam is? And um, so I had started pulling some of those photos for all about Adam. Like what, what is, what is a picture that really expresses who he is? And, uh, you know, I'm looking through some of these, maybe not so much. These are just general photos, but that, that one, that one is definitely Adam, a personality. This one is definitely an Adam personality picture. So, and you know, this of course. So looking through this kind of getting an idea, I started thinking, oh, this is going to be a great. <clears throat> excuse me, way to tie in some of these classic photos. And are they already scrapbooked? Maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't know. Like that, oh my gosh, that's such a great picture of him. So now what I can do is in this process go, yeah, these are classic, classic Adam. This is just classic Adam. This one, not so much, not so much, not so much. <clears throat> possibly, but, 
um, you know, what is this? Yes, love that. That's just personality. So you can see I'm just kind of giving a quick look through my photos to say, yeah, these are great photos. It's not like I'm going to toss them, but this is definitely personality. So now what can I do? I, I'm going to grab that photo folder, right? And <clears throat> I'm going to put on here, Adam, personality, Al, itty, that's why I use pencil. And the dates here are, you know, kind of um, child. Uh, you could just put childhood. And what I'm going to do in the notes, though, is say um, this is going to go in all about Adam, volume four. So now I've, I've thought that through. I go, this is something that I'm going, I want to do. I've decided, you know, looking at the big picture, this is going to be something fun. I'm going to have a highlight reel. And now I can start making connections between these two stars. Do you see that? So I'm going to start making connections between, like, I can look at some of these pictures and just go, oh, you know, you have always loved food. And really make volume four a true gift from the heart and, and talk about who he is as a person and not just documenting photos. And to me, the way you do that is by pulling in these pictures of his personality so that we can start drawing those um, references, right? Like we can just go, yeah, that is definitely something that I want to keep in mind for volume four, this highlight reel of who he is as a person, who he grew up, who he was growing up and then um, really celebrating uh, his life and who, who he is. Now, these pictures, these are great Adam pictures, but they're just going to go back in the box but, and, and not get, I mean, I'll probably just put them in another folder, but they're not going to be set aside for this volume. Okay, so that was just kind of one of my ahas I wanted to share with you as far as um, the album plan for Adam goes. This is going to be so much fun and I'm so excited. And you know, our album project should get us excited, right? And when we look at that, we go, okay, that I really want to work on that. I really want to have that, you know, make that for him. And the other thing that seemed to really make sense when I started thinking this through is that when we have a stack of photos like this, then what we can do, because this is 2004. <laughs> so uh, let me, let me talk a little bit. Actually, I want to talk a little bit about um, photos for a second. So let me grab these. I'm going to put these in another photo folder. And I'm just going to write on here, this is Adam Childhood. So those are the ones that I'm not necessarily going to put into the album, but this is it. Okay, so I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to set these aside and just kind of go over a little bit about photos. And I'm going to set this guy aside <laughs> because we are going to take another look at pictures and kind of how we work on the picture side of things. Okay. So for me, what I've, what I did, I want to kind of share visually this process. So this is one of my big power sort boxes. I'm going to go up a little bit so you can see. This is one of my big power sort boxes. And this one happened to be 2005, six and seven. Now this is when we were also switching from film to digital in this era, right? And so this is kind of what I have left. I've been pulling those photos out of this and this was um, 
what did I just pull out of here? 2004. So I did the same thing. I had a box of this 2004, which is why I pulled all of these photos of Adam from 2004. These were pictures I had printed. Digital is a really different story. So we're going to talk about digital in a second. But this is printed. So I pulled all the 2004 out of a box like this. And then the same, 2005, pulled all of Adam's out. These are pictures that um, I haven't, you know, I haven't even finished all my family albums. I've Some of those are scrapped and some of them aren't. So then from that, I put together a small power sort. Unfortunately, they don't sell those big power sorts anymore. So two of these make up the same size as that large one. So then I put a power sort together that is Adam, right? So this is kind of his working picture holder. <laughs> so that's where these came from, right? And that's where these that I just made are going to go back in. So this is going to go back in here because I've been working on those and now I've written my notes. I've gone through them. I've touched them once. I put them back in and I don't have to worry about looking through it again like I do this. Like this is some completely unorganized. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all these photos. But that's in the selection process. That's what we're talking about today is now going back to my plan. I can look at 2004. <clears throat> Actually, I'm looking at my pot planner too. 2004. And um, I can see that that is um, the start of kindergarten for him. And the end of kind of his preschool era, right? So out of all of these photos, now I have a goal in mind. Now I have a plan because I know I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for what's going to go here in kindergarten in his volume one book. And then I'm also in the background thinking about what are his personality pictures? Is there a picture in this group that really just is, you know, 100% him, so much of his personality? <clears throat> so that I know I've got a place I can put that in this folder, right? And then I also know, I'm going to grab another photo folder here, that this is going to be, you know, this would go into his stack for kindergarten. Okay, or uh, yeah, into 2004 is kindergarten. So does that make sense? I hope that's kind of coming together now. So I'm pulling, this is um, printed, already done printed photos. So just like I did with that first little stack of photos, now I'm gonna kind of go through these and go, all right, what, you know, just again, like that, <laughs> that is Adam's personality for sure, right? So that can go here. Um, and then this is, this looks like an Adam birthday picture. And this is really cute. These look like birthday pictures. So maybe these have to go in. This would look like the morning of his birthday. These are preschool pictures. So now I can just kind of start you know, going through this stack and going, okay, why is Audrey in here? Audrey actually needs to go in Audrey's book. So that goes over in a different pile. This is preschool. This was at home. So maybe I have an at home pile here and preschool, preschool, preschool. So um, now I can start at least looking one time at these photos and going, all right. So I can at least categorize some of these um, 4th of July and put those in all their different photo folders. So now then when it's time to pick the photos for his school album, they are grouped by category and I can go, okay, so maybe now out of this stack of preschool photos, and I'm sure I've got more in here, let me pick the best two or three that maybe will go on. Um, well, let's say I had 20 photos. 
I get to decide then, is it going to be a two page spread of preschool? This was um, photos of him in preschool. So out of this stack of all of his preschool photos, which photos in here then are album worthy, right? So that's the next category, which are album worthy. So I'm going to put on here, Adam, the name of his preschool. And then this was 2004. So it was Sierra Madre Community Nursery School. So we um, would just call it SMCNS. <laughs> Too long to write it. So now I've got a place for these and I start categorizing, putting them in his box and finding the best pictures out of all of those. So not all of these are album worthy, right? They are going to then end up, some of them I, I also I may purge and, and toss, but that's kind of the process that I wanted to share is that, and I drew a little visual on that. Let me see for you. So from your you know, large grouping of photos, you have all of your photos printed by year, then you want to start pulling those printed photos into your child's box, right? And then you look at, you know, chronologically, if you're doing school books or you're working chronologically, how are you going to sort those photos? And then also is there personality? And the, oh, I forgot to say, and then also, um, in here, would there be a scout? You know, if he had scouts, just like this, I want to, you know, I've already looked at my album plan, said, yep, I want to do scouts. So now I've got kind of a little visual on scouts and a folder for that. And that's going to go in the back here because that is a theme. So like right back here is this scouts theme in his box. Okay, and then digital, digital is a whole different ballgame. So wherever your child ends up in this process, right? Most of us then don't print until we need those photos. So digital, what you want to do is search by child, use those awesome search features, print, and then add those to the photo folder. So this is this process, this sorting process for digital photos is going to be done on your computer. Then you get just the photos you want for your albums, right? So it's a it's two different processes if you've got this transition between um, printed, you know, film photos, this is all film versus digital. Okay, so I've been talking for a little while there. Let me come to the chat and and see if there's any questions or ahas for you. And then I want to talk a little bit about memorabilia today as well. Okay, so um, Annette, <laughs> Annette is finding that in her process that I need to label where I scrapbook my printed photos on your photo folders because sometimes a photo covers something I can use in a couple of books. For example, school books may have holiday school program photo, but I want that photo for my Christmas books as well. Of course, yeah. Now I have to dig into negatives if I only printed one copy way back when. That's awesome. And that's what, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about the new format for the photo folders because it does have all this, you know, printed room, <laughs> printed room for you to add all your notes. And if you've ordered from my shop, you know, I've been giving out samples of these so that you can kind of get them in your hands and see what they, um, how they work. And so, um, but they really, truly have helped me so much. That is that whole thing. The palest ink is better than the sharpest memory, right? Just write it down. So when you have that flash, like, oh yeah, this has to go in holiday album and in school album. Now you have it written down and that's that reminder for you. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, Joni says, are you going to start these volume albums after completing family albums with the pictures that are left? Oh, good question. So digital, no problem. Like I can just print whatever I want digitally. Um, 
the printed photos, as I, as I mentioned, I have pulled, like I have that, the big giant box I showed you, those are my family photos, but I pulled all the duplicates and extras of Adam already. So these are duplicates. So I don't have to worry that I don't have these photos in my family books. And again, some of the years I finished and some I haven't. And I can say that, yep, um, I've got that accounted for in my family album. And these are, you know, all up for grabs for Adam's album. But if you did only print um, one, picture, you may need to kind of look at those in a different way and say, like Annette was saying, oh, I, do I have to dig in and get my negatives and have another print made? Or, you know, I've on Tidy Up, I've talked about how to scan these also. They give great quality scans and just scan it, digitize it, and then print it. Um, so I did actually kind of get into that today. Let me pull... Um, And I was looking at, oh gosh, yeah, 2008. You know, I jump, the other answer to that question is I jump around a lot. Like, <laughs> and I just kind of go where, you know, I, I guess maybe I could have a better plan on that too. But um, I was like, oh, 2008, like I was looking for where was Adam in 2008? And then I start thinking, oh, have I scrapbooked 2008? And I'm like, oh, I started 2000. Well, look at that. I started 2008. Like there's Adam's birthday in 2008. And so he's accounted for already in my family albums. So anything in 2008, you know, uh, that's left over, I can just have fun with him. So I've already done some of those, um, some of those pages. I, I just need to get back in here and kind of finish. So there's Eric's birthday and, um, it's really good. I think going back. So this was, I just did this maybe a year ago or so and, um, being able to use peekaboo pockets and all those fun things that we know of now, to help us finish those family albums. So I guess the long answer to that is, you know, I, I'm working simultaneously. I'll probably maybe go back in here, pull the rest of 2008, finish this album, work on Adam's album, work on my current family, you know, 2023 album. So just kind of go where your heart takes you and, uh, you know, Enjoy the, pro enjoy the process. Enjoy the ride. <laughs> okay. Good questions. Um, let's see. It would be so much work. I'm 30 years behind. Okay. Wait, what? Um, eight. Okay. I think I missed so a lot in the chat. You guys were chatting without me. Um, let me see. Do I plan to continue to create albums for my kids as adults? I hope I answered that. I hope I answered that a little bit in Adam's plan. And, and maybe I didn't see your question until after I talked about that. So having, to me, this plan is really, really key. And um, kind of looking at, okay, I, I think I can, you know, give him, what is this? This is four, five, six, seven, eight. And then scouts would be nine. And then maybe, you know, his next big, you know, if he gets married or, starts a family, but it, maybe that would be 10 albums. That to me is reasonable. Um, it might be too much for him and maybe he wants to pick and choose. And, and we hold on to some of these albums until he's ready to have them. But, you know, I think it'll be interesting as he, you know, gets older to see what would, what does he gravitate to in the gifts that I'm doing for him. Okay. Um, and Linda wants to know, where can you find a copy of the memorabilia checklist? We did this in the pop um, members, in the pop crop. So I'm going to go over this next. Um, but this was a checklist that is a free download in the member area. So if you are a member, you can just grab that. But we did that. I, oh, gosh, can you believe we've been doing pop crop for, I think, almost two years now. Um, it was one of the first ones. So you'd have to scroll way back. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, we are. Here we go again. Yes. Okay. So I, I hope I got most of those um, questions. And uh, the scanner I use is the Epson. Um, in fact, I have it right here. And I really, um, I did a whole video. I think it was a two-part series on this guy. The Ep Epson FF680W uh, Fast Photo, this one. And um, if you're interested in that scanner, just uh, look for the tidy up on scanning your photos. That does not scan negatives, that just scans photos, but it does a beautiful job. So, yeah. Okay. Um, I know. Robin says, I can't tell you how good it makes me feel that you are working on a 2008 album. Absolutely. Oh, if you saw my shelf, you know, there's a lot of empty albums, but you just keep working, you know, do the things that really matter to you. And, you know, so kind of switching. And, and here's the thing. I'm kind of like that squirrel. <laughs> Oh, this looks fun. Oh, this looks fun. Oh, let's make cards. Okay. And then, all right, let's get back to albums. How about the kids? Let's do this. <laughs> so um, I think it's okay. Give yourself that grace to work on what matters to you at the time. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, there is hope for you both. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about memorabilia then. And then if I missed anybody's question, just uh, remind me in the chat. So what I want to mention <clears throat> about memorabilia. So this is the checklist that we talked about. And it is really that um, very similar to what we've been talking about before. And we, we, we had a great discussion. So that if you're wanting to, again... Here's the other thing about the POP membership. You have access to all the um, archived POP crops. And each one of them, those are four-hour crops, remember? So you can go back and re-watch this. <laughs> or if you are a new member, just scroll through the list until you see the one on memorabilia and watch that. Because this was a really good talk that we had about memorabilia. But what we talked about was, again, getting everything in one place. And <clears throat> we also talked about, you know, family, how to get that organized. But really, that was my aha for getting that big red notebook and getting it all in one place so that I can kind of look physically and go, okay, wow, yeah, there's a lot of memorabilia for this and, and so on. And then item number two is be selective. And that's what we're talking about today is the select you know, how do we select what we want to scrap? And my notes here were that we really, at least I'm talking to myself here, <laughs> resist the urge to keep everything. So I want to give you an example. Here's memorabilia that I am still going through. And I have to say, I started reading, this is his second grade journal. And there are some absolute precious things that Adam wrote and drew about in second grade. And it's this morning I ate opolo. We called oatmeal opolo. I don't know how that came. I think one of the kids um, called it opolo instead of oatmeal. So it just kind of stuck in our family with sugar. S-H-I-G-E-R, sugar on it. I drunk milk with it. I put my milk on the opolo. I like the opolo. And then here is the more sugar. He's saying more sugar. So he's putting all the brown sugar. And no wonder he liked his opolo, his oatmeal in the morning, right? So something like that to me, when I see and I read that, I go, that captures such an amazing moment in time that is that really is a part of his history. And do I want to keep that? Absolutely. Because that brings me so much joy when we talk, when we think about that was part of our life. You know, they had a lot of oatmeal growing up. And um, 
some of these were just really, really uh, timely, precious. Now, are all of these going to go in his album? No, but I'm not going to throw them away either. This would definitely end up in, in like a memory box. And then at some point, you know, he'll have his album that will be easy to flip through. And then if he ever wanted to go back through and read some of these, or if I did, you know, we'd have them still in a place, but not necessarily in an album, if that makes sense. And um, being selective for what goes in his book does not mean we have to get rid of stuff. Although, as I've been going through all of this memorabilia, so this is stuff I still um, have to work on, I have created a whole pile here that is now in my toss. So this is in my toss pile. And why? Why is it? Because, and some of this got water damaged and so it, it's not a big deal. But when I was going through it, what I would suggest is, you know, have a good chunk of time, have like an hour or two where you can actually kind of dig in. And when you start reading, what happened to me is when I started reading some of his um, memorabilia and things, uh, I started going, wow, that hit me, you know, hit my heart. I, that is definitely a keeper. And other things like, well, that was just a piece of schoolwork that he had to do, right? Like that was just something. And it's not like this was, you know, anything big, a lot of this stuff. And this was something he wrote, but it wasn't the best thing that he's written. And a lot of these things, the same thing. So do I need to hold on to all of this? No. Do I want to hold on to the things that bring me joy? Absolutely. So making that distinction, I think when you're in the process, it's a lot easier to go, that was just kind of, eh, eh, you know, I don't, I don't need it. He doesn't need it. It's not something that truly shows a moment in time or who he was or his personality or any of that, right? So this was my discard pile. So I can put a, a post-it right here. And sometimes, remember, we've talked about creating, making sure you have your post-it. So you have a toss pile and you have a keep pile. And then you probably want to have your album pile, right? So as you're going through, those are kind of the three categories where I go, okay, this, yeah, don't need that. That, the Opalo, oh my gosh, let me go grab Opalo. <laughs> That's going to go in an album. Some of these others, oh, you know, wonderful, wonderful stories in here that, you know, just kind of tell his life at the moment. Maybe, you know, the rest of those will end up in the keep, but not necessarily go in the album. Okay, so those are kind of the three things. The other thing, um, the three areas, the other thing is label. Now this is what I wish I had done. So <laughs> learn from my mistakes, but label as you acquire. Remember the three P's, pencil, pen, or post-it, whatever it is, get it out. The three P's, get a pencil and write on the back of something, right? This has a date. So I know 10306, remember? And so you can put a post-it on the back, um, and where's my 06? 1006 would be second grade. Okay, so this is second grade. So now I have that labeled which album, so I can add that in my red book in the second grade pocket, you know, pocket like this. It can go in there. So as I'm going through label, with a pen, pencil, or post-it. Make sure you have that. And then the fourth thing we had on the memorabilia checklist was to keep your perspective in check. The why and the who. Why are you keeping this or who are you keeping it for? 
and to be sure to talk about it. And, uh, you know, we've mentioned that, like what may be important to you may not be important to the person you're doing it for. And we need to throw guilt out the window. So the fact that I have a huge pile here of toss, I'm not going to feel guilty about that. You are going to say no guilt, no guilt, no guilt that we are getting rid of memorabilia, that we are getting rid of photos or anything. <laughs> That's, you're going to let that go. You're going to just let that go because you can't, you can't hold on to everything. You really just want to keep the things that are meaningful for you or are meaningful for the person you're scrapbooking for. And here's something I want you to write down. Okay. This is so important. I'm actually going to write this down with you. So let me grab a marker and remember this. And if you took the pop crop, if you were at the pop crop, you may remember this when we said it. Too much special. Makes everything. What? Not special right? So if I kept everything from his journal and I said, oh, I'm just going to take out every one of these pages and put everything in his album, does it feel special anymore? No, it doesn't. Even though, like I said, this may not be something I want to get rid of. It doesn't feel as special as something that reminds us about what we did you know, for breakfast and his brown sugar addiction <laughs> for his oatmeal. So just remember that too much special makes everything not special. So if I say, this is it, this is the thing that I want to remember, and maybe two other things out of his journal, that is going to be special. When he looks at that, it's not going to feel overwhelming and it's not going to feel like, oh, look at all this stuff. I don't want to read it. I don't want to take the time to go through that, right? Instead, I'm curating, I'm pulling out the things that I think are pretty special out of here and then adding that to his album, okay? So remember, too much special makes everything not special, <laughs> okay? And what you want to do is keep what captures the best moments of that time. Okay. And remember to stay flexible. The last item, stay flexible. For larger items, consider a memory box and keep your perspective. So if we have larger items like this, I, I pulled some of these out. What, how do we, how do we get this into album? So these were, some of these were like this one from Adam was kind of a special project because this was an art lesson that I taught, taught in his fifth grade class. And, um, it was, it was supposed to be a travel poster, you know, create a travel poster and, Adam wanted to travel to the moon. Why not? Right? The new moon. And so this was his travel poster that he created for going to the moon. And um, that is album worthy, right? I want to make sure this is captured. It is much too large. And as much as I'd <coughs> love to put <coughs> the original in, one of the best ways I know for something like this is to put it on the floor in natural lighting, you know, uh, a, a brighter room works better um, instead of a room that's painted blue or, you know, gold or something like that, that's going to give you a kind of a different cast, but just something in a lighter, bright or open shade outside um, and then take a photo of it. And then you have an option to print that whatever size you want. You could print it four by six, you could print it eight by 10, 12 by 12, whatever you want. <clears throat> but it's then going to fit in your album format. Okay, so definitely remember larger items. 
those still have a special place, but we've got just to figure out um, how to add those to our book. And the other thing you could always do is scan them and stitch them together. This would not fit on one of my scanners, or you could take it and have it professionally scanned and then um, have it printed that way. Okay, so stay flexible. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned here, consider a memory box. So for some of those things that we want to keep, but are not going to be special enough to go in the album, uh, you could always put those in a memory type box. Okay, and I know some people have like plastic tubs and they have dividers in there and each divider is, you know, a different year. And so all kind of the extra stuff ends up in there. And then you get to decide what to do with that. But really, I think for our album selection, we, we do need to keep our perspective and just remember um, too much of a good thing <laughs> can be too much, <laughs> right? Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, going through this cura curating and the selection process, you really have to put on you know, your hat, like you were curating work for a museum. You can't, you wish you could put everything up, but there's only a certain amount of wall space for your museum, right? It's the same for our albums. You really need to just pick what truly is going to be that special moment to um, add to our albums. Okay, so we've talked about photos and that selection process, the different process between printed photos and digital photos, how to get them organized, and also, you know, the selection process of that. And then the the other thing, the archive for, for my photos, for Adam, this is going to be his archive. So what I use, what goes into the album is going to go in the album. But then if there's anything else, those photos are just going to stay here in his box, right? And so I could see at some point like, yep, these are extra photos. If I ever need an extra photo of Adam or if he ever wants to look through these, he can keep them and then let him decide, does he want to toss them someday, you know, whatever. Um, but you never know. And then uh, have a box of all the leftover memorabilia as well. But then the key points are his albums and his album plan right? Which I have here. Okay. So let's come back to what, what, um, so we can, <laughs> can I print that special instructions on canvas so we can make it a needle point pillow for our crafters? This one? <laughs> and that, that's funny. Yeah. Uh-huh. Special instructions. Too much special. <laughs> makes it not. Okay. <laughs> All right. I love it. Thank you for making me laugh. All right. Um, Robin asked, do I ever scan and just digitize so that I can dump the original? Yeah. And you know, that was what we were talking about with the scanner. Um, being able to digitize definitely, especially some of those bulky extras, you can, you can say, yep, I've already scrapped this. I've put it in my family album. I've put it in Adam's album. I've scanned it and now I don't need it anymore. And that is um, one of the reasons on the checklist, I actually have um, pictures scanned on here. So I noticed when I was going through some of my older photos, I wanted to make sure if it was a film photo that I had scanned it. So what I have in here, you know, I, I can check that off too. Okay. Great questions, you guys. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see. I don't need to save every math sheet your kids did. Amen. Amen, Linda. <laughs> right? You don't need, I know. I was like, yep, don't need that. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. And Cheryl said she would let Adam look through his, the toss pile. And maybe that is something absolutely uh, that you would want to do is before you get rid of the toss pile, just say, oh, is there anything in there that, you know, I, you would want me to keep in your memorabilia. 
But for a lot, like I still, believe me, I still have a ton, a ton of um, memorabilia. And something like this, the one that says, this is actually um, a, what do you call it? Um, you know, uh, what do you, like a, um, what's the word? Like they, it was just a, a handwritten beginning paragraph and conclusion. This was not the finished product, which is why I know I don't need to keep it because there was a finished product, right? This was just like the note taking and the formatting. They did a lot of those, you know, um, different types of worksheets where they had to uh, put, you know, uh, do bubble maps and do mind maps and things like that. And those kinds of things, it's like, I don't need that because I have the finished product. Does that make sense? So that's why this one is over there uh, with a lot of other stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. Yes, and Cheryl, this is uh, Pop Crop Weekend, so we will be on on Friday. Yeah, I mean, Saturday. <laughs> Friday night scrapbooking and Saturday at the Pop Crop. Absolutely. Um, yep. And Robin says, do you print at home? Absolutely. And um, I have two printers that are my favorite, the Epson PM400 and the Canon Crafter printer. And I've got videos on the Crafter printer and we've talked about that, but those are my two favorites. Um, love them. And they're both on my favorites page if you want to take a look at them. Okay. Um, yay. Outline. Annette, outline of what? Outline? I'm not sure. Um, Sharon says, our family had the best day going through our items. So much fun to look back on, but what a lot has gone now. Yes. Yeah. And Sharon, so if that is, so, you know, if you can get your kids to be part of that process, that is Amazing. Amazing. But I know some of us also have kids that are not at home anymore, right? That you may have to just, in order to get this done, you may have to make those decisions or at least whittle it down somewhat for them and then go, okay, these are the things that to me are really important. And, um, you know, what, what do you think? What do you want to keep and what do you want to put in your book? So yeah, my, my, so early Sunday morning for my Aussie friends for the pop crop. You got it. I know. Pajamas, totally optional. Come as you are. <laughs> okay. A draft. Yeah, thank you. That was it. Draft. Draft. A lot of drafts are in my toss pile because I have the finished. Thank you. Oh, outline. That's what... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes those words just can't come out of my mouth. Outline, draft, uh, mind map. <laughs> right. Thank you, guys. Okay, so uh, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, yeah, that was the word. <laughs> Outline. Thank you. Um, let me see. Is that the right one? <laughs> okay. I don't know if that's going to be too glitchy. It's a little glitchy. Sorry about that. So uh, are there any other questions? We kind of covered a lot. We had to go and come back. Thank you again for joining me because um, I know that tech kind of messes us up sometimes. So if you uh, have questions, you know, definitely leave those in the comments and uh, hopefully we can take a look and answer them as a community too. I love, again, love, love, love the fact that you guys help each other out and give your advice and, you know, best, best tips to all of us. <laughs> Sharon says PJs and camera off. I <laughs> get it. No worries. Okay. So I think, um, oh, one more comment from Sandy. Several years ago, I showed up showed my 30 something daughters, the boxes of memorabilia that I had saved for each of them. They both begged me to toss with abandon. So she did with no guilt. I love it with no guilt. There you go. And again, that's where we want to keep in mind, like I was saying on the memorabilia checklist, keep in mind no guilt right there. No guilt. 
And it's really about why are you keeping it and who are you keeping it for? Because if it's for you, then say it's for you and I don't want to get rid of it. And, you know, I'm keeping it and it's for me. But if it's for someone else, yep, you got to go with what they want too. So absolutely. And I think even each of us kind of knows our, our kids, hopefully, to help them. And I know, like for me, I know my son, Adam, he would not want to sit down and go through this pile of stuff. He would rather that I curate first and give him a smaller pile to look at. And then we talk about that pile. He would be bored, bored, bored. In fact, one of the journals I found of his, <laughs> I'm bored. I'm so bored. This is boring. I'm so, so bored. I'm really, really bored. <laughs> and um, school was a challenge for him. So, you know, you have to kind of go with what, what works for you and your kids. Always, right? So, uh, let's see. Any other questions? Um, and thank you, Mandy. I do appreciate, I know we had to kind of pause, come back, but thank you for your, your thumbs up and, and for supporting, um, this content. So thank you. Um, yeah. And Judy, the replay will be on once we're done with this stream. I'm going to take that first little glitchy one down and just leave this one up. So thank you for coming back and watching. Okay. So good, good, good. I'm glad you liked it. So Annette said, great, very motivating. I, and I want you to do that. So do what you can in the selection process, make it special for you. And, um, we'll get there. We'll get there. Next week is going to be really fun because we're going to talk about the planning process. So now we've done the hard part. We've gathered We've assessed, we've given ourselves that plan. Now we get to go and, and we've selected. Okay, so I still have some selection to do, get, getting all of that. Once all of that is organized, this is the big push this week to next, because that's a lot to go through, memorabilia and photos. Then we get to plan. So I'm going to come back around to the album maps, which I had pulled out. And remember, I added those as a download to my website if you need them. But the album maps, and then, then we're really going to get to the nitty gritty and start planning our albums and looking at each of those pages and what products we're going to use. And that's going to be kind of fun, too, because I've got a lot of ideas on how to create our, you know, the school albums. They're going to feel differently, definitely, than the All About Adam albums and uh, what products I use for those. So that's it for next week. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday. Um, and don't forget to join in the fun for Friday Night Scrapbooking. I have a special guest joining me on Friday. You are not going to want to miss Friday night. We are going to talk about hybrid scrapbooking and wait until you see my friend Debbie's album. She's going to be here in studio with me. I'm so excited. And uh, she has got uh, a lot of tips for us on how we can take and use digital pages, printed digital photo pages from Creative Memories with peekaboo pockets, with embellishments, and do this beautiful hybrid scrapbooking. So can't wait for you to see that. Friday the 13th. So costumes are optional <laughs> if you want to come dressed up. All right. We will see you then on Friday and then Saturday at the crop or Sunday for my Aussie friends. Okay. Thanks again, everyone. And um, have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.